Hey, how's it going out there? Today, we got a video, and we're gonna show you how all the cone angles work in your sonar and the different screens that you get. So depending on the type of transducer you have, you may have clear view or you may have clear view and side view. And we're not gonna go into live scope today, but all the transducers have the original traditional. So let's go ahead and dive into it and get started. All right, so first off, let's talk about the traditional. And the traditional, it has a regular circular cone that goes down from the transducer. And depending on how deep you are is how much of a diameter or the distance that you're looking at in that cone. So traditional is really cool. A couple of advantages to traditional is you can look really deep. So if you're in waters over, say 300 foot deep, you're probably gonna be looking at your traditional and you have multiple frequency ranges. And so you can set the frequencies just from 16 degrees and there's, there's a bunch of different options. Or you can just set it on chirp. And a feature that I really like is the split frequency where you can set one to reach farther down because remember, the lower the frequency, the farther down you can look and you can set one side on a lower frequency and you can set one side on chirp. And that's really handy. All right, so starting out, I do have my simulator on, so some things aren't gonna be quite the same as they will for you. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at split frequency. We'll go to sonar, and on your sonar, you've got what's called split frequency down here. Go ahead and hit that. And on one side, we have, I believe it's 180 kilohertz, and on the other, we have chirp. And to change that around or change your frequencies, hit menu and frequency, and it'll give you left or right. And you can see my left's at 180, and I can change that to chirp. And I can go to my right and go to 180 and flip them around. So those are some different things that you can do with that split frequency. And that is a useful tool and we'll go over that in a later video. Now the disadvantage to traditional is it's not UHD or ultra high definition. So what you're seeing really are just a lot of objects and it's hard to determine whether, hey, that's a tree down there or a tree stump or a rock or what you're looking at but it is easier to tell the fish most of the time because they're suspended and they show up, the bigger fish show up as arches. One video for that is arches versus dots. And I'll stick a tag up here in the side so you can take a look at that if you want to. All right, so when you switch over to Clearview, Clearview has a lot of advantages, but it has a couple of disadvantages as well. One is you're limited to the depth and it doesn't have a cone. It's a very narrow beam. So you're only seeing just a sliver as you go by. And I like to look at it as it's a Xerox machine. If you put a piece of paper on a Xerox machine and leave the lid lifted up, you can see where that just kind of scans across. That's kind of the way I look at clear view and side view actually. So of course the big advantage is you get the clear view images. You get those crystal clear images that you can see the leaves on an old tree that's been flooded or something like that. So the clear view is actually, it is really dynamic for that. And you also get a whole variety of colors. And depending on how your mind interprets colors, there's just, there, there is a color for you. <laughs> and they're all in different contrasts. So pretty easy to see. Me, personally, I like the moss. All right, so like I mentioned before, when you see fish on Clearview, they show up as dots. And actually, that's not too bad because when you're looking into a tree or something like that, and you see those separations in the dots, that really is easier to tell than on traditional where you have the arches and it all just kind of blends together. You can't really tell. So anyway, Clearview, a lot of advantages to Clearview. And what I like to do when I'm first getting started, if you're a new Garmin user, is I'll put traditional on one side and clear view on the other side as a combo. And let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at a combo that I use all the time. 
And for that, I'll go into my combos and I have mine built and I have it over here on my shortcut key is number two. And that is with the traditional on one side and a clear view on the other. Now, if you're a new user to Garmin or any fish finder, this is really helpful because we're pretty confident in what we see on the traditional, but when you see it on the traditional in the clear view, it helps you gain confidence in what you're seeing on the clear view because it doesn't come through as arches, it's just dots. But anyway, now when you're running off the same transducer, I haven't found any interference problems. When, you, when I'm running, say, just one unit on the console and I run this compo, there's no interference whatsoever. But I have been told by others that you can get interference when you run two separate transducers uh, where you're running, say, your traditional off the front transducer and your clear view off the back so you can see all the way around the boat. And they are different sonar cone angles, but it is a useful tool. I actually picked that up from a video I watched of Edwin Evers where he was doing that. So anyway, very useful combo. But remember, this is just a sliver that you're looking at here where this is a cone. So you may be wondering just how much area you're looking at. Well, those are pretty complicated calculations. So I did find one trick for traditional that works out pretty well. And let's go ahead and take a look at that right quick. All right, so here's a pretty cool little trick. So when you're in your traditional, there's what's called an A-scope. To get to that, you go to Menu, Sonar Setup and Appearance, and you can turn that A-scope on. Now, one of the advantages of the A-scope is you can see it as it draws fish arches, like up in here. But the other advantage, see over here where it says 13 foot? Now watch as I adjust. go down 200 foot, it's at, what is it, 68 foot? So that's showing you the um, diameter of your cone. And they used to, they had a really cool little cone symbol on there, but they don't have that anymore apparently, or at least on my 106 they don't. So you can see basically how wide your cone is by looking at that. So I thought that was pretty cool. I wanted to show that to you. Well, at this point, you're probably thinking, wow, that's a lot of jumping around in the menu. I hope I can remember all that. Or am I gonna have cell service so I can look at this video when I'm on the water? But we got you covered. I put together a spreadsheet that shows all the different settings, except for the live scope. It doesn't have live scope in it. And it doesn't have the, if you got two units networked together, but I'm working on that right now. So anyway, this spreadsheet is real handy. I've sent out over 1,100 of them already. All you gotta do is email me at doubletfishing at outlook.com and I'll reply back with those attachments. And while I'm at it, I'll sign you up for the monthly newsletter and promise I don't fill up your inbox. It's just one newsletter a month. So it's not gonna be like a lot of these other subscriptions. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at side view. Now, side view, much like clear view, has a real narrow beam, but unlike clear view, you can adjust how far out you see. And to do that adjustment's pretty easy. All right, so when you're in side view, you'd be running along, you can see over here to the side, I'm looking 50 foot both sides right now. If I want to adjust that, I can use my plus and minus buttons. And if I go plus, I go to 40. If I go to minus 50, 60, or 70, which is about where I like to run. Now, when you are riding close to the bank and you're wanting to look out over a shelf or a ledge or something like that, you can go ahead and just look at the left side. Is that left? Left side or the right side alone and have the boat actually on one side. So. It, so let me just show you on the screen, it'll be a lot easier. And when you're inside view, if you do happen to be running up on, say you're on the shoreline over here, you can go to menu and then view selection and you can go left only. And with that, that's gonna show you just the left side. 
or you can go ahead and go just right only and do the same thing there. Okay, and for you guys on a pontoon boat who may have your screen flipped around the opposite direction of your transducer, you can flip left and right. And to do that, go to Menu, Sonar Setup, Installation, and flip left and right. And if I do that, watch your screen over here. See, it flips it from left to right. So that's really handy if you need to, you know, if you're on a pontoon or something like that, where your, where your screen is flipped around opposite of your transducer. So for shallow water, and if you're gonna use side view, I'd suggest go ahead and take a look at this video. It's a pretty good one, and I think you'll get a lot out of it for how to ride along the bank and look out into the lake or the river that you're fishing. All right, so I know we covered a lot of information in this video, and I appreciate you sticking it out till the end. And until next time, keep calm and hook them and watch this video. It's the one that YouTube recommends for you.